Hey everybody, welcome to Banjo Quest. I hope you are somewhere cool. It is super hot out there. We're gonna play some banjo today. We are going to learn how to bend strings. Welcome to Banjo Quest. All right, so we are working on Ola Bella's blues. And what makes the blues blues? Well, these strange microtones between notes. And she takes advantage of that with these string bends. And we're gonna look at this today and learn how to do them together. Just take a look at measure five. We're tuned to G here. And we've gotta figure out how to make the bends happen gracefully. And we don't need them to call a lot of attention to themselves. It's very tempting in the beginning when we learn a new technique to make the technique sort of overblown and really flashy. But I want you to think subtlety here because it, it will make this idea and this type of phrase or technique sit better in the flow of your tune if you kind of dial it back and let it sit between the notes instead of get all out in front. So we're gonna look at measure five and we've got a this, this little upstroke there, that little arrow that points up, that's the symbol for a bent string. And what that means is we are bending up in pitch towards that fourth fret third string. So the note starts on the third fret third string and I'm using my middle finger here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play with that idea in a bit, but for now, let's use our middle fingers on our fretting hands. And we have got to somehow make this third fret note go up towards the fourth fret note. And before we even bend a string, don't bend a string yet, I want your ears to get used to this interval between pitches. So play with me. should notice, especially those of you who have been around music for a little while, is that this is, in the Western scale, it's as close as notes can get to each other in pitch. So it's a half step between three and four. That is not a lot. So you're not gonna have to bend the third fret very much in order to sort of push the note towards the four. But here's the thing. In the guitar world, they will often push the string all the way to the pitch they're trying to hit and hold it because they have a ton of sustain with electric guitar. And the electric guitar folks are super amazing at bending strings. That instrument is built, purpose built for bent strings. And all throughout the electric guitar history, there are tons of bent strings happening and it's well explored territory. They're masters at it. And because they can sustain, they can hold, they can get to a pitch and just sit there. We don't have that luxury with the banjo. We have a short sustaining instrument, so we don't need or want to just get all the way to that fourth fret pitch. I don't think it's even desirable to go all the way up a half step. So we're gonna do something really in banjo territory. We're gonna grab a microtone. We're gonna grab a pitch between pitches in Measure five. So instead of stretching that string all the way to drive it sharp to, towards that fourth fret pitch, we're just gonna pull it back a little bit. And yes, I said pull. I want you to try to pull first. So let's look at measure five nice and slow. One, two, three, four. A little faster. Now let's talk about the bend itself. Hopefully you get that sound in your head. I'm not going all the way. I'm not going to the fourth fret in pitch. That would require me to bend the string really deep towards the treble side of the instrument, really pull. And we have a lot of tension here in G tuning towards this third fret. So we don't need to do this for either aesthetic reasons or technical reasons. We can cut that way short. So pull just a little bit. You can see how little my I'm actually moving that string. You can even practice without your uh, striking hand and just get used to pulling 
gently a little bit towards that second string. Now, the reason we're pulling and not pushing, some of you may be tempted to push. If pushing is comfortable, I know that we have a lot of guitarists out there. Guitarists are taught mostly to push. It's a lot easier to do that up the neck where we're away from the nut and the bridge. We're sort of in the middle of the instrument. We can really get big pushes. Pushing makes sense down here. And especially if you're playing on the first string, you have to push, you can't pull, or you'll drag it off the fretboard. If you feel comfortable pushing that, go for it. For me, because of the proximity to the nut and the fact that that makes it feel like the string is under a lot of tension here, I like to pull. I feel like I have more control here and I pull nice and deep towards the second string using not just one finger. And this is the other thing I want you to think about. If you try to single this out and pull, you're gonna get tired real quickly. I like to sort of make one big finger. See, I'm kind of using this as one big finger. I'm also recruiting my little finger. They're all kind of working together and I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna pull with everybody there, except my index, and I'm gonna pull and I'm bracing my middle finger with my ring and my pinky as I pull. If you're pulling with your ring, and some of you may want to do that, uh, you can also bind things together. My, I can feel that my strongest two fingers to pull with are my index and my middle, so I'm probably going to stick to that but I could in a pinch pull with that ring finger just so long as I'm recruiting other fingers to help me pull, that's gonna be relatively easy to drag that string towards the second string. Let's talk about timing of this thing. So in the tab, it's tabbed out as an eighth note pair. I don't want you to worry about that so much. I want you to be loose and relaxed and casual about this bend. Don't over-determine it with time. Simply pull until, pull when you feel like it's right to pull. You could wait on it. And it, the pull sort of bleeds into the next M skip or downstroke. Or you can get right on it. Or anything in between those timings. So let the timing be loose. As long as you can drive the clock with your, with your striking hand, it's all gonna work out fine in the wash but it is something for you to think about. Let that be sort of an artist's choice kind of situation. What sound do you like better? Do you like to wait and be lazy about the pull? Do you like to be ahead of the beat? Do you wanna be somewhere in between? Experiment, play with it, and see what you like, what your ears gravitate towards, and go with that. Now in measure nine, we have a very slight modification of our bend. We've got a, we've got a, fifth string during the bend. Let me slow that down for you. One more time. That's cool, because that fifth string is firing off and punctuating that bend towards that fourth fret note. So. Try that, it's a lot going on, but if you can nail it, it allows you to sort of keep the rhythm driving and still have the bend happen. One of the issues with the looseness or casualness with the timing of the bend is that you could make your time feel a little mushy. So in measure nine, we've got this fist string activating during the bend. So see if you can do that. That's kind of a technical challenge. It doesn't necessarily have to be there for aesthetics, especially if you don't like that sound, but give it a try. I threw it in there just to, uh, make you work a little bit during this bend and to show you what options you have in this simple phrase. So now we've arrived at something really interesting about bending strings, and that is a lot of people when they play, when I watch people play the banjo, they are bending strings accidentally in their pull-offs. And I think bending strings on purpose, like in the context of a tune like Ola Bella's Reed's Blues, can show us when we shouldn't be bending them in other tunes. So you get used to the sound of the bend string. It's intentional, it's deliberate. We are working for that sound. 
then maybe when you go to your next tune that doesn't have bend strings or you don't want that sound in that tune, you will be paying closer attention to how your fingers are behaving on the strings. What we don't want to have happen is for you to learn Ola Bella's blues, be bending all over the place, and then go to your next tune and also be bending by mistake or unintentionally. So use this as a lens through which to view your own playing. Are you bending strings? For example, in a pull-off, if I have a pull-off on the fourth string second fret, this is what it would sound like if I bent that inadvertently. I'm initiating the pull-off too soon, I'm holding on to that pull-off too long, and I'm driving the note sharp as I'm doing my pull-off. That is not a desirable sound most of the time. And I see it, it's very, very common because it's hard to make sure that these fingers are in control and operating straight in and out of the instrument. So use Olabella's blues bending technique to learn how to bend, but also to learn not to bend when you don't mean to bend. Does that make sense? I hope that made sense. That's it for today. Have fun, this is super fun. I want you to go, I want to show friends, show your family that you can bend these strings. It's addictive, but then dial it back so you don't do it all the time. It won't be special if you bend all the time. So keep it under control, people. And I will see you next time on Banjo Quest. Thank you.